Welcome to this tutorial where we take a look at setting up your audio interface with Pro Tools. In the menu bar, navigate to the setup menu and select playback engine. The playback engine window contains your primary options for your audio interface and its related settings. It is important to ensure that these settings are set appropriately each time you start working with Pro Tools. The Playback Engine drop-down menu shows a list of available audio interfaces. Select the audio interface that you wish to work with. Whenever you switch to a different Playback Engine, Pro Tools will require a restart of the application to switch to the new audio interface. Pro Tools will prompt you and perform this action automatically. Click Yes to restart the application. The hardware buffer is the next most important setting in this window. When audio is being recorded or played back, your audio interface requires some time to process the incoming and outgoing audio information. This amount of time allotted for this processing is the buffer size. In most situations, a small buffer size is preferred. However, extremely small buffer sizes are not always optimal too. When you have a large buffer size, you will notice an audible delay between you speaking into the microphone and you hearing your voice in your headphones or speakers. This delay is known as latency. While this can be distracting while recording, a large buffer size is less demanding on your computer. If you choose a small buffer size, this latency is reduced accordingly and can sometimes be reduced to a point where it's no longer noticeable at all. However, small buffer sizes increases the workload on your computer, as it has very little time to process the audio. Choosing the right buffer size requires some experimentation. In order to choose the right in order to find in order to find the right balance between latency and computer performance. In situations when you're recording audio, you will want a small buffer size to minimize latency. On the other hand, when you're not recording audio, such as when you're mixing, you will want to set the buffer size to the highest possible setting to get the best performance from your computer. You can leave the other settings as they are the default settings are fine for now. Next, we will take a look at the I.O. setup window. This can also be found in the setup menu in the menu bar. The I.O. setup window shows the individual inputs and outputs available on your currently selected audio interface and some other internal audio routing options. The three tabs that we're concerned with are the input, output, and bus tabs. We can leave the rest alone for now. The input and output tab shows the available input and output audio paths that have been configured for your audio interface. You can rename this IOS to a more user-friendly name if required. Simply double click on the input or output in the name column to rename them. We can delete unwanted paths if required. Select the required audio path and click on delete path. You can also use the delete key on your computer keyboard. To restore your audio paths to its original configuration, click on the default button. Note that this does not restore any audio paths that are already in use by an existing track. To restore an audio path that is currently in use, delete the audio paths manually before clicking on the default button.
Buses are internal audio signal paths that can be used to route audio from one track to another. Audio outputs are also automatically configured as buses, which are mapped to a hardware audio output. There are a large number of predefined buses in the default configuration. We will take a look at using buses in another lesson. For now, reset the bus tab to the default configuration if required. The audition paths and default output bus should be set to your primary output. These are usually your main outputs or your headphone outputs. Setting this up correctly will prevent problems when creating new tracks or when using some of the preview audio functions later on. Once you have your I.O. setup configured to your liking, you can export these settings to a file which you can later use to import back into the session. If you save the settings file in the default location, this new I.O. setting will be available to you in the Create New Session dialog, which we discuss in your creating your if you save this setting if you save the settings file in the default location, this new I.O. setting will be available to you in the Create New Session dialog, which we discuss in the Creating Your First Session tutorial. Our audio interface is now ready for use in Pro Tools.